Teslas are a bit like phones and computers and TVs. They're always evolving, lots of little changes. They don't just have the same thing for a couple of years and do a refresh like most manufacturers. They're always evolving. And this here is the latest Model 3 standard range, which actually has quite a big difference in that it has a new battery, different size, different chemistry. So I'm gonna take this car for a drive now. It's brand new and I'm gonna give you a review. And I'm gonna tell you what I think about it, but also what are the differences in terms of efficiency and charging speed. So I'm gonna see what I can measure of all those today and give you my opinion. So this car was brand new yesterday, 10th of December 2021, and all the current standard ranges in the UK now have this battery. The long range performance, they're different, they remain unchanged, but this new battery for the Standard Plus, it's called it a Standard Plus, uh, but the sport we used to know as a Standard SR Plus, is now featuring this LFP battery, we call it. And I won't go into all the technical details, but basically this is a completely different battery chemistry and it uses less precious metals. So it's cheaper to manufacture and it's easier and more ethical to mine. It's less energy dense, but the standard range is an efficient car and it has the space. It can accommodate bigger batteries. So what they've actually done from this is go from a gross 55 odd kilowatt hours to a 60 kilowatt hours. Couple that with the single motor on the rear on this car, and it has always brought great efficiency. These new cars also have heat pumps, so they're probably one of the most efficient electric cars out there. But with this new battery chemistry, it brings different, potentially efficiency in different temperatures and different charging profiles. So that's one of the main aspects I want to test today. And this has just had its first full charge. It charged this morning to 100%. And now, that's the key. This new battery chemistry does allow a 100% charge on a daily basis. That's what it likes. With testers, we've always had this kind of 90% daily charging limit. And not just testers, actually. Most cars actually recommend a maximum of 90% daily charging. You can go to 100%, but it don't like to be sat around there. So basically, you set the charge limit to 90%, and that's what you do every day. However, now, you can go to 100% every day. And that's exactly what I did this morning. It's the first time this car has been charged 100%. And that showed a theoretical range of 273 miles. Now, that kind of mileage in the real world is what a long range would do on a pretty good day. So I'm intrigued to see what this car now can do in the real world. And it's exactly what I'm gonna to test today. So this morning, I got in the car fully charged. I had preheated it for about five minutes, so I didn't, it wasn't preheating for ages. It was essentially a fairly cold car and it was four degrees Celsius. It's just coming up now and as I look at this screen, it is a six degrees Celsius now at 9.30 in the morning, so it's a pretty cold day. I've got the heating on and I'm gonna drive real world. I'm not gonna try for maximum efficiency. I'm gonna drive at the legal speed limit. I've done a school run. I've done 14 miles a day through traffic, through town and then into the office. I've had a quick coffee in the office and now I'm gonna leave and do this test. And this first kind of 25, 30 miles will be your kind of A roads, country roads. And then I'm gonna hit the motorway. So a mixture of different driving, not trying too hard in fairly cold temperatures. Now I did do another video where I recharged the LFP in fairly cold conditions, stone cold battery hadn't been driven and its charging speed wasn't brilliant. But I'm hearing that if the battery is warm, then it will charge pretty quickly. So let's see what exactly what it does in the real world. And along the way, I'll give you some opinion on the other changes this car has. This might be the most basic model in the range, the cheapest Tesla you can buy, but it still comes loaded with equipment. Uh, in here, still unchanged, and you still got the you know double phone charging pads down here. You got matrix lights, you got heated seats, but the standard range now also comes with if I come to here, heated steering wheel as standard, heated rear seats as standard, and of course the heated front seats like they've always had. So a Tesla Model 3 does have a really good equipment level as standard, heat pump standard. The heat pump you have to spend usually an, you know, a lot of extra money and usually sometimes a thousand pounds on other cars and manufacturers to have that and that increases efficiency yet again. And the Tesla heat pump does seem to be remarkably good to be fair i was always a bit skeptical of heat pumps but actually we've done some other tests and the heat pump really does seem to make a big difference so this should be the most efficient tesla 
available. It's the cheapest Tesla available. And so this is why I'm really keen to see what it can do real world. That 273 miles quoted range was quite remarkable this morning. I've now got 248 miles of range, but I've covered nearly 23 miles. So I'm actually not far off that target. And this is why I wasn't planning to do this drive today. I got into the office, had a coffee, and I'm like, right, I'm gonna head straight out. I wanna see exactly what this car can do in the real world. And you can see it's only still five degrees Celsius, so the heating is working. Um, my seat is hot now though, I'm gonna turn that off. <laughs> I don't need that on. I think I'll leave a little bit of heated steering wheel on. My hands are chilly. Um, but in here, all lovely doesn't really uh, seem to have changed as ever I'm not so keen on this wooden trim here and this is why we do a lot of those Alcantara replacements but you know it's a very nice place to be and as ever great visibility it's low dashboard instantly a really good clear view here my first Tesla in 2015 was a model s70 very basic one 70 kilo pack real world drive I loved it brilliant I guess over years, you know, bigger batteries, dual motors, performance models, all well and good. But every time I drive just the simple rear wheel drive ones, I really like them. There's just something about it. This Model 3 standard range, it feels lighter. The steering, it, it, it's better balanced. You know, I like a rear wheel drive car, but just being lighter at the front, it's got, an, I think, an even better turn in. I mean, a Tesla's always very sharp anyway. But not having that bit of extra weight at the front from the motor, it feels even better. I think the rear-wheel drive ones are some of the best to drive. Obviously, the dual-motor ones bring better performance, and if you need the four-wheel drive, absolutely, I totally get it. But there is something about that purity of the rear-wheel drive. And if you put your foot down, the, the back end can kind of bring itself around a little bit. Attraction comes in early, so you're never going to spin this thing round very easily. But it just has that little bit of balance about it, and I have to say. I really enjoy it. This is a lovely thing to drive. Okay, so how's efficiency so far? So when I had done the 14 miles of city driving, I'd averaged 247 watt hours per mile, which I think was pretty good. That was warming the car up, doing school run traffic and everything. So I think for that, it was pretty good. And now I've just come through the new forest and I'm about to join the motorway. So my efficiency so far is come down to 228 watt hours per mile. That was pretty good, eh? that's four and a half miles per kilowatt hour roughly speaking and so what have I done I've now got a range of 240 miles so I've used 33 miles of range but I've covered 31 and a half miles so I'm pretty close to this predicted range which is phenomenal usually it's a very optimistic number but so far so good so uh, as you can see I've just joined the motorway now and I'm gonna bring up the speed to uh, speed limit of 70 miles per hour try and maintain that as much as I can, keeping everything real world, and see how that affects the economy and how many miles I can get from this car in the real world. Performance is one of the changes. So according to the Tesla sheets, rather than this being 0 to 16 5.2, it's 5.8 seconds now. So it's slower. This new battery is slower. I can't really feel that. I mean, let me bring this down to 50. We're just coming out of a couple of road works. So there's 50 and I'm gonna to go to 70. So three, two, one, go. There's 60 there's 70. It's a quick car. Um, coming out of junctions, off roundabouts, I wouldn't say it's a noticeable difference. If you go from one to the other, maybe you'll feel it, but it's still a quick car. We've got to get this in context. We're still talking about cars. It was quick as a BMW M5 was a few years ago. Uh, so it's slower on paper. Does it feel it? Hard to tell, it's still a quick car. Uh, okay, so I've been driving for, on the motorway at about, uh, for over 80 miles now. We're averaging out 239 watt hours per mile since about 130 miles since this morning, 100%. And that's quite a consistent average now, driving at motorway speeds, which isn't the most efficient for an electric car. Slightly slower speeds and actually more efficient. Um, and it's been quite chilly. It's just gone to seven degrees Celsius. It's been six nearly the whole time, so it is quite chilly. So I think that's a pretty good efficiency uh, considering the weather and considering I'm doing a constant 70 for quite a long time now. I just wanted to make a note of this now because what I will do uh, at some point in the not too distant future is put in a charging location. And when you put in a charging location in this colder weather, it will precondition the battery for faster charging. And when it does that, that could increase this consumption. So that's why I just wanted to log this consumption, which is now 240 watt hours per mile. 
before it starts doing preconditioning because that could then go up due to the energy being used to heat the battery to enable the faster charging. Just looking at the additional information on the vehicle here. So this has got, it says here it's got premium speakers, no external amplifier, full self-driving computer, uh, but this just has a standard autopilot enabled. And it's got the infotainment processes, the Intel Atom processor, prototype permanent magnet motor on the rear. Bit of flood water here. Brand new car through water. Ah, that's okay. Okay, I've just arrived at the chargers and pulled up with 19% left of the battery, having covered 185.3 miles. It's actually just dropped 18 now as I sit here, but 90% when I pulled up. So let's pro rata that out. That would work out to a real world range today of 229 miles, which I think is pretty good. And that's with battery preconditioning for fast charging. So that use some more energy and increase the consumption. So my average watt hour per mile as I sit now is 251, which um, would be four miles per kilowatt hour. But that was running about 238 after some consistent uh, motorway driving, which remember isn't the most efficient. I've had the heating on. And in fact, yesterday we drove this kind of 50 mile journey um, on a, uh, some A roads and it got down to 211 watt hours per mile, so very nearly five miles per kilowatt hour. Very impressive, which is why I think this car is capable of some pretty exceptional range for this size of battery. Um, so 239 miles, impressive. And I used 46 kilowatt hours, which again, pro rata that out, works out to 56.7 kilowatt hours potentially usable out of a 60 kilowatt hour pack. So that's good as well. So that's definitely a gain. Now the next test here is to see what we can do with supercharging speed. I did do a little test before with one of these, absolutely stone cold, and its supercharging speed was really, really slow. But that's not a real world scenario. A real world scenario is you've been driving for three hours or so, and then you supercharge, just like now. And the battery is preconditioned, just like now. So I'm going to turn this camera around a little bit. Have a look at the screen. Let's see what we get. I'll go and plug it in. This is new. Little supercharging tips. That's good. See here, look, leave space between cars because the stalls may share power, which is good. We call that your honor rule. It's good that that's now public on here. Okay, let's see what we get. Straight up to 120. This is better, 130. These are V3 chargers, 150, 160, 169 kilowatts has gone straight up to. And potentially even with an even lower battery, maybe it goes faster, but here we go. So this is the thing, it's about efficiency as well as the charge speed. So that was 750 odd miles per hour. We're adding into it now. So you can see there, 88% and it's eight minutes past. So basically 30 minutes have gone past and the car is back up to 88%. That's enough for another 200 miles of driving. Good charging speed, gradually turned down. If I'd arrived with even lower state of charge, it would have maintained a faster charging speed for longer. So it actually would have been less time to add those miles. So it's impressive, very impressive. And there we are, 33 minutes to go to 90%. Let's go, that's enough, let's stop charging. Okay, so I just got back and the incredible thing is after filming that charging, I just got in the car and drove back to the office. That's mainly kind of A roads and I was stuck in traffic for quite a long time coming through Salisbury, coming back down the south coast here. I wasn't going to mention this bit, but my average economy there was 188 watt hours per mile. I've never seen such efficiency. So that would be in terms of miles per kilowatt hour, 5.3 miles per kilowatt hour, which would be enough to give this car a range of over 290 miles, which is incredible. I presume you can see here, let me just move this round just a bit, just in case. Look here, 188 watt hours per mile. So that's incredible, I have to say. Very, very impressive. And it's still only eight degrees Celsius, so. Um, and I had the heating on, everything like that. I've just turned the heating off now because the fans make noise in the microphone, but that's incredible and super efficient. I'm very impressed with that. 
as we saw earlier on the motorway, it's obviously less than that. And especially when you take into account the energy used for preheating the battery, obviously uh, affects the efficiency, but nonetheless, uh, just a, a super efficient car. And I guess what's important here as well, one of the key factors and the benefits of efficiency is that let's say there's a day we don't have the Tesla superchargers and you use maybe an independent charger, it's only a 50 kilowatt. Quite a lot of the rapids are still 50 kilowatt, which doesn't really cut it these days. It means on a 50 kilowatt charger, you can still add battery and range and mileage quite quickly. If you stop at a 50 kilowatt charger in a Porsche Taycan, you'll be there nearly two hours if you're really low and need to go, you know, uh, to nearly 100%. Not what you normally do, but you'd be there a long time to add the same number of miles uh, as this. I mean, easily double the time. So that's where efficiency really does make a big difference. This is very impressive. Anything I can criticize this Model 3 for? Well, there's a couple of odd bits. Yes. Um, one, in a Tesla, I always seem to get cold feet. If I just leave the climb on auto, I get cold feet and I always have to kind of prioritize it down to the feet here other cars and auto i just don't get the problem but easily worked around the door handles have no illumination on the outside so now that it gets dark pretty early um it's dark and you can't find the door handles you have to sort of prod around the door get the door handle open it's always been a bit of a bugbear of mine on the model 3 made especially worse when the uh, black door handles became standard it's even harder to see if you've got a dark car dark door handles and a dark night you can't see them uh, and then lastly, it's just that slightly fidgety ride really that just kind of bugs me. I mean, this car, 18 inch wheels, and it's lighter with that hand the front motor is a little bit better, um, but it's still slightly fidgety. It, it's okay, um, but what kind of bugs me is when you drive other cars, other cars are just a bit better. Um, not all of them, but many. The thing that bugs me really is that the tester engineers obviously are very, very clever people and they've done a lot of great things with this car and it's evolved over time and it's just got better and better and better and better. The standard range has always been a brilliant car. It's just got better and better, but the suspension, I think they could do something a bit cleverer so that it's a slightly better ride. And I think they've just kind of overlooked that area. But other than those things, it's pretty hard to fault this car. It is epically good. And so I'm very impressed. Um, the well done you know tesla on that one it is hard to fault like tesla hate tesla i mean that's a remarkable efficiency figure uh given the conditions today and obviously great charging time so anyway i'll wrap it up from here um i hope that's been useful thank you for watching i'll see you on the next one thank you very much hey everyone thanks for watching our videos if you like our content and want to see more don't forget to not only subscribe but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R. Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news, stories, and things as we go on each one of those channels.